everyone, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we'll be delving into AWS IoT Core for the first time on this channel. And for those of you guys who don't know, maybe some of you guys do, AWS IoT Core is pretty much Amazon's cloud service designed specifically for IoT and distributed system applications. And it has a lot of powerful capabilities that many of you should know, especially beginners new to this uh, IoT field. And it's just really important to learn, especially if you're just delving into IoT and you're trying to create some powerful distributed system applications. It can potentially aid you in your projects because it really allows you to connect easily to the cloud and collect and transmit data to and from devices and take actions with that, with that tool. So in today's specific video, what we'll be doing is we'll be going over a simple example, as you could see here, where we are going to send messages to our Raspberry Pi Pico W over the internet using MQTT protocol with the AWS IoT core. And we'll simply be flashing on and off the LED on our Raspberry Pi Pico W based on the message we send from AWS IoT core. And of course, this simple example can be extended to much more involved and much more complicated applications. And so before we jump into it, I hope you can like, comment, subscribe to the channel and also consider donating to the channel as well to continue supporting Shilla Tech content. That being said, I do not want to bore you. Let's just jump straight into it with step one. Before we get into the code, we have to get set up in AWS IoT Core. So I'll be showing you how to do that. Okay, so the first step is you simply want to go to your AWS account. If this is your first time using AWS, well, congrats because AWS is really a important milestone to software engineering. So we're just going to head and click this link here. As you could see, I just searched on Google AWS console. I already have an account, but they do have a free tier as you could see here. So don't be scared of any charges. So let's go through the steps to create a free account. I'm just going to sign into the console here. Okay, AWS is very complicated. There's many tools, but I'm just going to make it simple today. And we're just going to focus on one tool, which is the IoT Core tool. So once you're in your console, you can simply search IoT Core to find that service. And so we simply want to do two things with this IoT core. There's so many things you could do, but we're just going to do two. We're going to create the policy that manages the access of our device to AWS IoT core. And then we're going to create the certificates for the actual device. So the first thing we want to do is create the policy. This essentially manages the access this device will have. So you can see I already have a Pico W policy, which has connect, publish, subscribe, and receive. And it could do that on any channel, as you could see here. So we could just go ahead and create a policy, just like we did with that one. And we could just do Pico. You can call this whatever you want. Let's call it copy. I'm not going to use this. I'm just going to show you that this is what I did to do this. But I'm just going to use the previous policy I created. So we can just go and select the policy action. And of course, we need the other three. So publish, receive, and subscribe. So those are the main types of actions you do in a subscribe and publish model, right? You subscribe and you publish. But as you saw, there's many other actions you could do. We're not gonna get involved in those, maybe in a future video. And you just want to do the asterisk here, the star, because you want to be able to, I believe publish to or subscribe to any policy you want. Of course, if you are in a production application, you want to restrict this and be more aware of which devices should have access to what. But in this case, actually in this video, we're just going to connect receive and subscribe. We're actually not going to do any publishing, but you should just have publish anyways, because publishing allows you to send messages to AWS IoT Core. In today's video, we're just receiving messages from AWS IoT Core. So once that is done, we can just click create. It's very simple. So we have that policy. It's a copy of the previous policy because it has the same exact properties. And so once we have that policy, what we want to do is we just want to go to all devices and things and you can see I already have a thing and it's a device essentially. And we could just create a new thing. Okay, so we're just gonna create a single thing, but you can create many. And you can name it wherever you want. Let's call it Pico W copy. Okay. And then we can just go with the base settings there, auto generate a new certificate recommended. And of course there's other ways to generate a certificate. I never really dabbled in those, but you can if you like and read the documentation on their IoT core. Uh, resource. So you can see I have these policies that's allowing me to select. So I could select any one here. So as you can see, this device based on the policy will have certain restrictions on my application. So we could just do Pico W policy copy. It's the same thing. 
And so it's going to give you the screen. Make sure you download the certificate. We could just download this, the key files. Okay. Because I don't believe you'll be able to see those again and the root CA certificate. So make sure you have all of these. Okay. Once you have these four, these will be uploaded to our Raspberry Pi Pico W locally to be used in our MicroPython code. So that is everything we need on the AWS side. So if you downloaded your certificates, assign the policies correctly. Now we can simply jump into our, our Raspberry Pi Pico W code in Thani, and I could show you how things are working there. Okay, so now that we have our setup in AWS, let's just jump to our MicroPython environment. I am using Thani, and we're just going to walk through the one script we're going to have to run today to get this thing to work. Okay, so just go into whatever editor you want. I prefer Thani in this case, just for this simple example. And the first thing you want to do is once you are in Thani and you're connected to your Raspberry Pi Pico W, you just want to upload those four uh, certificates and files we downloaded, those keys. So it has a certificate, a PEM file, and two keys. So we could just go in Thani and you could just navigate on Thani on the right on your local computer. And you could just say upload to with this. Okay, so I already did that, but I'm just going to do it again just to show you and it'll overwrite it, that's fine. because We already did it before. And so those four files should be on your Raspberry Pi Pico W. The next thing you want to do is you want to download the MQTT client library that we're going to use on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. So in order to do that, you just have to go to this link, which I'll link down in the description below. And you just want to copy the contents of this file. Just go here, here, and just copy it. And we just want to go into the lib folder on our Raspberry Pi Pico W. If you don't have a lib folder, you can just go ahead and create one and create a lib folder. That's where your Raspberry Pi Pico W saves libraries. Just go in there and create a simple.py file. So just go here and cr create a new file. I already created one. And you could just go into that simple.py file and publish or paste what we just got from that, that URL. So that's really all we're doing. You could just save that, ignore the other library. That's just some other stuff I was doing. And let's just go back to the home library on the Raspberry Pi Pico. And so we pretty much have all of our setup almost done there. So in this code, we just have the required imports machine to manage the LED on and off network to connect to the internet. We have this SSL because we have to do some things with the SSL certificate when communicating with AWS. We have Ubin ASI to do some binary uh, applications or transformations. And then we also have, of course, importantly, this MQTT client, which will allow us to subscribe to that topic on AWS core and wait for messages from AWS IoT core on the device. Also, I have this config file. You do not need this, but this just stores sensitive information such as my internet name, my internet password, which uh, simply you can just hard code here if nobody else is going to see your file. But it's typically good to have your configs in another separate file. But you could just go ahead and hard code them here as a string. Um, we can ignore this for now. That's just the client ID we're initializing there. And Really, the client ID can be whatever you want. It just has to be a unique ID. So every client should have a unique ID. So if you have multiple Raspberry Pi Pico Ws, uh, this line of code should suffice for your client ID. But really, do not worry about that too much. And so what we have to worry about here is we have to substitute the file names for the key and the certs. So this is the file names you push to your Raspberry Pi Pico W. Yours will be different than mine. So you could just substitute your private pen key the numbers that you got in that file. So that's just the file name for that. And the same thing for the certificate. So just copy the file name there. Your Amazon root CA1.pem should be the same here. And another thing important here is that we didn't go over yet is we need this MQTT broker URL. So this MQTT broker URL, I have a comment here. This can be found in AWS IoT core settings under endpoints. So I just hid this in my config file because it is sensitive information. It's the URL you are using to access AWS IoT core. So if you want to find that just quickly, you can just go to back to your AWS IoT and go to the left and click settings. And once you click settings, you should see endpoint and it should be straightforward there just to copy and paste that in. Once again, I threw that in a config file. You do not have to. 
So we initialize our LED using the machine.pin. So this is how we do it on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. And then we define some functions here. So we have this read PAM function. I got this from another gentleman online. This allows you just to read the, the certs and the keys uh, appropriately. So we're not gonna get into too much detail about how exactly that works. Just know this is for reading those files, those complicated file names we got from AWS, okay? And here we have connect to the internet. This is just straightforward function just to connect to the internet. So if you have your correct internet name and password, that should be fine. Now this function is really important because this is the callback function to handle when we receive messages from AWS IoT Core. So this function, you can really define however you like. And in this case, what we're doing is in MQTT models, we have a topic. So we subscribe to that specific topic. So whenever we receive a message, we decode the name of the topic, the message in the topic, and then we print that in this format. And then if the topic is LED, so we're going to use the LED topic today, and the message is on, we're going to turn LED on. Otherwise, we'll turn the LED off. Otherwise, toggle, we can just toggle it uh, on or off, okay? So now we, once we define those functions, hopefully that's straightforward and there's nothing unclear there. If there is, let me know. We simply call the connect to internet function, connect underscore internet. And then we simply read the data in the private key, public certificate, and the CA files by using that read PEM function and passing in those file names. And then we connect to the MQTT clients, as you could see here. So if you set up everything correctly with the client ID, the broker, this should all work just fine. Okay, so we just have some printing here just to show we're moving along in the code for debugging purposes. And then we initialize, so we set our MQTT client.callback function to that callback function we defined above. And then we connect to the MQTT client, and then we subscribe to that topic LED as we defined above. And then we say print connection established awaiting messages. And then we just wait forever for a message. So MQTT client.check message. I believe this, the way I did this, it'll eventually time out. So if you want to play with a timeout, you could, you could look into doing that. But for this simple case, it should be fine. So we're just gonna say while true, where it's always going to check for messages. Let's go ahead and run this code. If I did everything fine, it should work well. So give that a mess or, or give that a second. So connecting to MQTT broker. So I'll give that a moment. Sometimes it takes a few seconds. Okay. So connection established. So now we're just waiting for a message. Okay. So now let's just quickly go to our AWS one more time. So we just want to test this. So you can see I already clicked it on the left there, test MQTT test client. And we just want to publish to a topic. The topic we call today is LED. And we just want to do toggle because this will turn our LED on and off accordingly. So if we go ahead and click this. See, my LED just turned off because it was on. So if we go back to the code, we can see that it printed that message and did everything properly. So if you got to this point and you see this, it should have toggled your LED accordingly. So we could just do it one more time just to show you. And once again, my LED turned back on off the screen here, but I hope you trust what I'm saying. And if it worked for you, I assure you, you know, you trust what I'm saying at this point. So that's pretty much it for today's video. So I just showed you how to set up MQTT, sending messages to the Raspberry Pi Pico W over the internet very simply using a really important tool that all beginners in this space should learn, and that is AWS IoT Core. So if you want to see more on AWS IoT Core, let me know in the comment section down below. It is an incredibly powerful and diverse tool. I'm certainly interested in it, and I'm probably going to build some real IoT products with it. So even if you guys do not leave any comments, I'll probably still make a video in the future. But once again, let me know specifically if you have any questions or issues with this video. And as you can see, it timed out eventually. You could probably play with that. That's fine. And uh, before I go, I just want to say, remind you guys to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And even better, consider donating to the channel if you really like this content. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching and take it easy, everyone.